Hey everybody, welcome back to Top Down Commander, Episode 9, Bicycle Built for Two. Two commanders, that is. Take off your shoes and let's head back into the Deck Dojo. Hey Planeswalkers, welcome back to the Top Down Commander Deck Dojo. I'm your card drawing sensei, the Magus of the Salt himself. With the return of Cycling in Ikoria and Commander 2020, I thought it was a perfect time to dust off a personal favorite deck of mine, a bicycle built for two. Two commanders, that is. Before we get started, just remember that if you like this content, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave me a comment down below, or get at me on Facebook or Twitter. It takes no time, costs nothing, but means everything to me. With that out of the way, let's look at the commanders for today's deck. That's right, I said commanders. Today we're running the partner pair of Ravos Soul Tender and Kaidel Chosen of Krufix. This pair is going to give us access to cycling across four colors. Ravos has an anthem theme that doesn't really matter in this deck, and he can return a creature from our graveyard to our hand on our upkeep. This can be useful to return a creature with cycling and a pinch to get our engine going, but mostly Ravos is there for colors. Kaidel is the better of our two commanders. She taps to add one colorless mana for each card we've drawn this turn. As we cycle lots of cards, we're going to tap for lots of colorless mana which we can use to cycle even more cards. Which brings us to Sensei's strategy for this deck. We're going to be loading this deck with cards that cycle for two generic mana, get to cycling our cards for free, and use one of our payoff cards to win the game. Let's kick things off with our ramp package. We're not really running much in the way of ramp. It's mostly mana fixing. We start off with Soul Ring, Edge of Autumn, and Beneath the Sands. Next up, we're running all of the land cycling cards. When you land cycle a card, you discard the card like normal, but instead of drawing a card, you grab one of the corresponding lands from your deck, then shuffle your library. Some cards have basic land cycling, but others have specific land cycling, forest, swamp, etc., allowing us to grab non-basic lands as well. Moving on, we've got a small package of utility spells that also cycle. We get a couple of fogs, a couple of counter spells, and some removal spells. You'll notice that all of these spells have cycling for two generic mana. That's important, so pay attention. Next up, we've got our first payoffs for all of this cycling. The Astral Sisters. Astral Slide and Astral Drift. Both of these cards are going to do pretty much the same thing. Whenever we cycle a card, we can flicker a creature until end of turn. With these, we can blink our own creatures for value, or we can blink an attack by our opponent's creatures. The Astral Sisters are a versatile weapon in our cycling arsenal. Moving on, let's look at how we're going to get some recursion going on in this deck. Aramancer can get back an enchantment, while our Kaomancer can get back an instant or sorcery. We can use these to get back important engine cards we need, or just to get back something that cycles to start the cycle again. Sun Titan can recur our useful permanence with converted mana cost 3 or less, and all of these cards can be blinked by our Astral Sisters. Elixir of Immortality can put our graveyard back into our library so we can recycle our cards, pun intended. Abandoned Sarcophagus will allow us to cast our cycling cards from our graveyard if we need to use the actual spells, and Wander in Death cycles for 2 or it can return 2 creatures to our hands. But the best recursion card in our deck is Shadow of the Grave. For one in a black, Shadow of the Grave is an instant that returns to our hand all cards we've cycled or discarded this turn. Once we get our engine going, Shadow of the Grave can refill our hand and let us cycle all of our cards all over again. Sometimes this is all we need to win the game in one turn. Next up, we've got a train of generic cycling cards. Some have useful abilities, some do nothing, but they all cycle for that magic two generic mana. That's the sweet spot for this deck. You'll see why in a minute, but let's go ahead and skip over to the mana base for now and check out what's going on there. We're running Polluted Mire, Slippery Karst, Drifting Meadow, Remote Isle, and Blasted Landscape, which all cycle for two generic and can tap for one of our colors. Next up, we're running the three Cycling Dual Lands and all of the Shock Lands in these colors. They all have basic land types, so they can be fetched up when we land cycle as well. 
Then we've got Ash Barrens as our last cycling land, Ancient Tomb, which taps for two generic mana, and Field of the Dead. Because we've got so many lands with different names, why not? Next up, we're running the Ravnica Karoo lands. We can use these to bounce cycling lands back to our hand so we can cycle them again later. Throw in Command Tower, a couple of basics, Snow Basics, a Reliquary Tower, and that's the mana base. With all of this cycling going on, let's take a look at some of our discard payoffs. The Gitrog monster is going to let us play an extra land every turn, but most importantly, any time a land is put into the yard from anywhere, we get to draw a card. So when we cycle a land, we'll get to draw two cards. Yay value! Archfiend of Ifner is going to keep our board clear by putting a minus one minus one counter on each of our opponent's creatures each time we cycle or discard a card. Bone Miser is the reverse waste knot. Whenever we discard a creature, we get a 2-2 zombie. When we discard a land, we get two black mana. And when we discard anything else, we draw a card. More great value when we cycle cards. Before we look at our win cons, we're going to check out Sensei's top picks of the deck. This time, there are two Sensei's top picks. And the first is, drum roll please, New Perspectives. When New Perspectives enters the battlefield, we draw three cards, and then, as long as we have seven or more cards in hand, we get to cycle our cards for free. We really want to cycle for free with this deck, and New Perspectives, while good, is sort of restrictive. So that's why we're also running the other top pick, Fluctuator. Fluctuator is an artifact that says cycling abilities you activate cost two less. Every cycling card in our deck costs two colorless mana. So this makes all of our cycling cards free. So we've made all of our cycling cards free. How are we going to use that to win the game? Our main win cons are Faith of the Devoted and Psychosis Crawler. Faith of the Devoted says whenever we cycle or discard a card, we can pay one mana and each opponent loses two life and we gain two. This card is straight gas. Even if we're not cycling for free, this card can keep us alive until we get to the end game. And once we're cycling for free, this card wins the game in no time. Psychosis Crawler is going to ping our opponents every time we draw a card. Cycle enough cards and we can just win out of nowhere. Finally, we're going to run a handful of tutors to grab our important engine pieces. Dimir Infiltrator, Muddle the Mixture, and Shred Memory can all transmute to grab Fluctuator. Drift of Phantasms and Perplex can tutor up Faith of the Devoted or either of the Astral Sisters. Brain Spoil can tutor up Psychosis Crawler. Netherborn Phalanx and Ethereal Usher can find new perspectives. And lastly, Enlightened Tutor can search up any of these important pieces. And now, off to the budget report. As always, this and every deck tech's cost are calculated using TCG Player's Cart Optimizer, including heavily played and damaged cards, because we're playing jank, and you don't need to break the bank on jank. Today's deck is going to come in at $233.51. The most expensive cards in the deck are Fluctuator, Enlightened Tutor, and Ancient Tomb at about $85 between the three of them. With the exception of Fluctuator, all of these cards could be replaced with more cyclers and more basic lands. Just remember that while I'm not a budget brewer, I'm never trying to put a hole in anyone's wallet to play Commander. I just want each deck tuned to where I'd be most comfortable playing it. And that's the deck. Thanks for checking out my Bicycle Built for Two deck tech. As always, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share this video with your friends, and you can always find me on Twitter at Magus of the Salt or on Facebook at Top Down Commander. Until next time, keep kicking ass!